Well, that's what I always think they mean when Hollywood is dead. That you have to deal with these conglomerates, and how can a man make a film while he's waiting for a phone call to find out if the board of a sawdust <coughs> packaging yeah, company I, I likes the script? Some, there was a tradition. It was some kind of a tradition of, of uh, art and money, you know, an amount mm -hmm. of art and money. But at least there was some tradition. I mean, I, 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 I despise uh, the th very thing that uh, you were talking about, what Peter was talking about. That um, McKinney parking lots are, you know, are, are making movies, and there there really isn't any traditional Saul Urich or well, you know, an L. B. Mayer or Jack Warner. Mm -hmm. I met Harry Cohn. I, I was brought out in 1952. I was doing the show of shows, and Freddie Comar, who produced a, a lot of wonderful pictures for Columbia, uh, brought me out and introduced me to Jerry Wald, who was running the studio at the time. He's a wonderful picture maker too, Jerry Wald, and uh, a writer and a very dynamic guy. And uh, I, uh, I went to a meeting. I didn't know where I was going. Uh, Jerry said, come, come on, we're, 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 Harry Cohen, the meeting. Meeting. Said, oh, good, I'm going to meeting. I love a meeting. Yeah. So I went down to the barber shop. <coughs> and Harry Cohen was in, the, was in the barber chair. Straight out, straight. He was being shaven. Straight out. Yeah. Flat out. And uh, there were about 20 executives, studio guys, sitting around the barber shop. And I sat next to Freddie Comer and Jerry Wald, you know. And the barber moved him around like mobile artillery. <laughs> like he'd say, people? Yeah, he'd say, Joni Taps, wang, they'd swing him around, and Joni Taps would say, I didn't, I didn't know why. <laughs> so it didn't make money. You can't all make money. It was, uh, uh, we have a lot of black and white shoes, the things you like, Harry. And it was a lot of talk like that, see? And then he's, he, on, the, on one of the swings, he said, who's that kid? And I, I said, I'm not here. I didn't know what to say. I said, I'm not here, Mr. Cohn. I'm, <laughs> I'm simply not here. And you know what? He said, good, and he, that's it. <laughs> I like that boy. And yeah. one more story with him. When I was hired, uh, I, I don't know, I think Alfred Hayes had my office before me, and I, when I came in, I saw they, they took his name out, out of the door, out, and they put my name in, and it scared me. Zip zap a name, a person. I didn't want to open the door. I thought he was dead behind the door, you know? Yeah. <laughs> and, and so... I got crazy, and on that same day, the lunch hour, I went down, there was like a four-story building, Columbia, on Gower, and I changed all the names. Like, I took the names from the top floor. I slid them all out, and I put them on the bottom. <laughs> and I took the names from the bottom, and I put them on the third floor, and the third floor, I put them on the second floor. Oh, and somebody, yeah. somebody caught me. And they oh. brought me up to Harry Cohen's office. He said, why did you, why, why did you do that? We don't, we don't need that. Do you know the heart attacks you caused, you know? <laughs> we hire and fire people every two minutes. I mean, you know, the, I got lawyers, agents calling. Why did you, what? I said, well, I just, for a joke. I did it for a joke. He said, well, how do you like this joke? You're finished. <laughs> You're through. And then uh, I was fired. Humor. And then Jerry Wall uh, he went up and he did a lot of pleading and said, please give him a break. He's young, he's bright, he's good, he's Jewish, he's nice, he's short. <laughs> and eventually, so Harry Cohn said, all right, all right, uh, uh, let's clip off a few hundred a week. You know, something, you know. <laughs> but he kept me there. You're a legend yourself. We have I a am, message, we'll be right back. I was just looking through uh, Frank Capper's book, which film buffs are snapping up wherever they can get it. It's called The Name Above the Title, and it's just full of wonderful stuff. They, your first meeting with Harry Cohn, where you decided to get tough with him, was the best way to handle him. Is, is a classic. Um, I, I, can any could any of you make a film uh, without being completely in control of it? Uh, we all know how Orson Welles feels about that, or don't we? Well, of course, Orson was uh, Orson's. A lot of Orson's pictures have been recut, and I know you had Blake Edwards on the air talking about that, about recutting and so on. And, and uh, I imagine everybody here. I, I haven't had that awful thing happened, but I, I, I imagine you've had some experience with people fooling around with your pictures. No. You haven't? I oh, caught great. him, I'd shoot him. Great. But yeah. Orson, Orson did a picture called Magnificent Ambersons, which was uh, totally recut by a kind of group method, you know, like what you were alluding to, I think, at another studio, and, uh, and what Edwards was talking about. And it was all because of two disastrous previews that they had. And this picture, it was not the kind of picture that was, you know, it wasn't a, a, an average sort of movie. And they had two average sort of previews in Pomona and Pasadena, and they were played with a, with a Dorothy L'Amour movie, and the audience just hated it. And so it was totally recut and jumbled and 
botched, and of course it's still a great picture. But I think a great, great story in connection with what we're talking about, about one man running a studio, is with Zanuck had a similar thing happen when they previewed, I think it was The Grapes of Wrath. And it had a terrible preview. And, uh, you know, hissing and bad cards and everything. And they all got back to the studio and they said, Daryl, what, what are we going to do? You know, it's just... And he thought for a minute and he said, we're going to ship the picture. I think it's good. And that was it. You know, now that's one man making a decision. He could see a good picture. He just thought it was a good picture and the hell with it, you know. Yeah. I think those two previews, uh, we got kind of wiped out on, on Brewster McCloud because... Will you watch of, the boom shadows on uh, Mr. Altman, please? <laughs> <laughs> but... Uh, on, on Brewster McCloud? Yeah, we, preview? No, we took it to Denver, and uh, we had a, a great preview. We had much better preview than we did on, in, for MASH. And only at the end of the picture, nobody walked out of the, of the theater laughing because it wasn't a very funny ending. <clears throat> I thought it was fantastic. And all these guys from MGM were, were disappointed. And it took me about six weeks later to realize that they didn't even watch the film. Mm -hmm. They just, they saw the people coming out, they weren't laughing. I was the guy that did MASH, it's supposed to be funny, the picture can't be any good. Uh, ship it, and they shipped yeah. it. But they didn't, they, I've never I had anybody well, own it. Yeah. Did anybody I, ever I, try I, to I, take the film from you, Mr. Kepler? And, I always and, know where the Keys. No, <laughs> nobody ever tried to take Phil from me and, yeah. and, and cut it. No, I just with it loud. I just uh, you just laid that down from the beginning. Yes. Well, this is very rare. Right. I think that and all I think of if us you don't lay it down, yeah. you are, then I mm -hmm. think it's up to you, younger fellows right now. The, the Hollywood is, is dying. It's because you ha you haven't got control of your own films yet. Okay. And you have to find a way to get control of your films away from the from from those who consider film as some leisure leisure time investment and uh, just an art in a conglomerate of some kind. Yeah. And uh, it's got to come back into the hands of the creative people. And until it does, you're going to have these mishmash. You're going to have people who don't give a damn whether Hollywood makes it or not. You see? Mm -hmm. uh, of course, I, I got a story about a, pre a preview, a, a bad preview. If you want to hear one, I mean, would you tell sure. it? Let's my, take a my break. Own. We'll my take own. a break so we have time <clears throat> for it, and then we'll come right back. Good. <laughs> 